Welcome to everyone who is on. Thanks so much for joining us today. Our topic is GA4 and this is our August webinar. We will be doing one webinar per month for the rest of the year. We do have a brief slide about it at the end, but we'll have one next month. And the topic is evolving your marketing strategy and an economic downturn. So we'll make sure to send out information regarding that one in future webinars as well. And just as a note, we will be sending out a recording of today's webinar so that you can reference it after the fact. That will be sometime next week, just so we have time to download it and edit it a bit. So thanks again for joining us today. And I will hand it over to Carrie and Jason to get started. Great. Thanks, Zoe. So welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about GA4, what you need to know and what its impact will be on your business. We can start with just quick introductions. My name is Carrie Petrie. I'm the Director of Operations here at Data. Uh, I work with our client services team, so our account managers and project managers, uh, really making sure that we are providing great strategies for our clients and executing on all the things that we do for them. So thank you so much for joining us. Great. And my name is Jason Walbeck, Director of Advertising here at Data. I oversee what we call our campaigns team, which is essentially a group of specialists focused on a lot of our ongoing services, advertising, SEO, social media, and then assisting a lot, of course, on the attribution side as well, making sure we're tracking appropriate, set up, have appropriate tracking set up for our clients, measuring appropriate results um, that really show ROI um, and where their marketing dollars are producing the best results. GA4 has been a, a big focus for sure on my team, uh, especially Q2 leading up to the switch over here. It's been heavy on our minds, so we're excited now that we're fully in it here to discuss it a little bit further with you all. So here's our agenda for this 30-minute webinar. First, we'll talk about why Google made this switch to GA4. We'll go over how GA4 is different from UA and talk through understanding some of the metrics and talk about what this all means for your business. If we have time at the end, we'll do a little bit of Q&A. So we'll just see what our time looks like, but uh, we'll just dive in. Perfect. So to kick us off, it's always good to just understand what is GA4. If you're in the marketing world or any have any piece of marketing at all or sales attribution, I'm sure you're already aware, but GA4 is just Google's newest analytics software that's replaced what was called universal analytics. And that officially went into effect July 1st here of this year. I think a good, this quote here sums it up is really well in terms of what GA4 is. And this was actually something that, that Google put out back in 2020 when they just announced that GA4 was going to be coming, but it has machine learning at its core to automatically surface helpful insights, gives you a complete understanding of your customers across devices and platforms. It's privacy-centric by design, so you can rely on analytics, even as industry changes like restrictions on cookies, identifiers, create gaps in your data. The new Google Analytics will give you the essential insights you need to be ready for what's next. So with that, also understanding the context of why Google made this switch, that, that quote there sums it up pretty well, but really GA4 is more future-proof. It's built for the world that we're in today, and a big part of that is privacy. Universal Analytics, again, that's what GA4 re replaced here. It, it was introduced way back in 2012. So if you think of that over a decade of time, especially in the digital world, that's a that's a pretty long time to be using similar software. Obviously, Google's updated it over the years and changed things, but GA4 has allowed them to really build it from the ground up. And a big piece, again, of that revolves around privacy here. If we look back to 2012, that was well before GDPR came out, the California Consumer Privacy Act. We're seeing a lot of other states now come out with their own privacy acts as well. So that's just going to continue to grow become more important and you need to be able to have solutions that are going to have um, compliance within those privacy acts and things of that sort. So big things here, Google's been talking about a cookie-less future for quite a while. So GA4 is set up so that it no longer stores IP addresses. It can find ways to better track people without relying on cookies, which will be really beneficial going into the future here. And then there's other cool features that allow you to turn off location-specific data with the California Privacy Act, ability to not target people and measure data from California is going to become 
more and more important there too if you're doing business there and then there's also just data deletion requests so things that allow you to actually delete data at the request of specific users so i have no doubt this will continue to evolve and grow and become more prominent but again ga4 google has really built it with these tools in, in mind the next big piece in terms of the why is cross device tracking so again 2012 people interacted with devices a little bit differently back then. Now, nobody's just going to your website on a computer. They have a tablet and they're visiting on their phone and they're going back later, maybe on a desktop. So the big shift here is going from a session-based tracking to user-based. And what that allows Google to do is really track individuals across web. And also the big piece is is app as well. So if you use a, a mobile app for your organization, being able to actually track people across those devices as well and when they're visiting apps. So Google has a combination of four different methods that really help you unify this data together. We only have 30 minutes today, so we're not going to dive fully into those. But the one that I did want to point out is this one called Google Signals. So it's a pretty simple option to enable right within the settings of your G, uh, GA4 property. Really what it allows you to do is aggregate data from people um, that are logged into their Google accounts and then who also have ads personal personalization enabled. So it just gives you a greater view there. It's definitely important to enable it if you plan to do remarketing through Google ads or anything like that too. So I would say out of all of this, check that one out if you haven't already. It's gonna be beneficial for you there. I think one thing that we were talking about earlier is how this is really providing much more meaningful information. Because if you think about how you interact with websites, you might be on your phone doing some research and then maybe you pull up your computer to, to look at it a little bit more before you're ready to fill out a form or make that call or whatever it is. And I was even thinking, I've been at data for eight years. And when I first started, one of the big questions we asked clients, is your website mobile friendly? That was still a question that we were asking because not every website had a mobile component. And now that just goes without saying that every website does. So you can see just how this is really keeping up with how things have been changing and how users really change with how they are shopping or utilizing the internet to, to research companies. So that's all exciting to, to now have all that information gathering correctly. If you don't have a mobile friendly site, we'll build you a landing page. <laughs> <laughs> we can help you with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Final piece of, of the why is machine learning. Obviously, you've all heard of AI, I would imagine by this point, but G, GA4 is really built with machine learning integrated throughout what that allows it to do is really just provide uh, better, more sophisticated insights and makes it a little bit easier for you to understand the results that you're seeing within the platform. So it does it in you know really three different ways, it helps you identify trends. There's algorithms and Google calls it predictive metrics that can actually predict the future behavior of users that are likely to lead to a conversion. So it works, I would say, one thing thing to caveat with Google, they're very focused a lot on e-commerce too. So they have some new tools that are built in there, but things that can show you which type of users are most likely to actually make a purchase on your website, for example. Next part is to generate insights. So there's some automated capabilities. You can also set up some custom insights um, that will prompt you right within the platform and just help you understand your data, um, tell you when it sees specific things that are of interest of you. Um, and things of that sort. And then it'll help provide recommendations. So it takes all these trends that it's seen, the insights, and it's really gonna help you just better understand um, what actions you should take based on the trends um, that it's seen within the platform. So this is one of my favorite features of GA4 is their insights tool. So this is what really utilizes that machine learning to help make your life a little bit easier. It does it in a few different ways. It has what's called analytics intelligence, and so this is really analyzing your data, looking for changes or trends in the data, and it'll actually give you little prompts, notify you automatically within the platform of what it's seen. You can see an example here. It identified new users that were visiting the one apply for cruiser marketing page on our site. It spiked from July 9th to through the 15th, rather than you having to 
go in, look for that yourself and, and really identify that. It just helps pull those things out and, and shouts it at you a little bit. And so then you could take that and we could look and see, okay, so did we do something different on those dates? Uh, maybe we ran book boosted posts looking for a specific open position at data or something like that and try to connect the dots a little bit more as far as, okay, so what would have caused that spike at that time? And then the ask analytics intelligence feature is the other piece. So rather than just the prompts that are being sent to you or the insights being sent to you, it allows you to actually ask GA4 really a lot of different things. So if you have specific questions or are looking to find specific metrics, especially as you're getting used to the platform here too, it's a really, really nice tool that way. They have, if you look way on the right, there's some basic prompts and questions that you can pick from. You also have the ability right within the search bar, like you can see at the top there, to search for whatever you want. So for example, if you were wondering what the top referral sources were for last month, type that into the search bar. It'll give you different reports that you can pull from and get that information. And so you can see an example of one of the results that it gave on the bottom um, middle screenshot there, but it gave us really exactly what we were looking for. Those are the, the top sources or referral sources that we had for last month. So really cool tool uh, to make your life, like I said, a little bit easier and just, yeah, that's really where the machine learning shines and is really beneficial here. To me, this is like the most exciting part because there's so much information that is in GA4 and it can be really overwhelming, but this makes it a lot easier to look at what you need to look at. It'll tell you what's important or what's popping up that's different. It really comes down to what questions you need answers to, and you're going to be able to find that a lot easier. So that's exciting. So now we'll go through and talk about the main differences in GA4, because when you start looking at reporting, you're going to notice some differences. So we'll talk through what those are. So the first thing is with the GA4 interface, you can see our examples here of UA versus GA4. They look pretty similar. As you start digging in, you're going to see a little bit of notice, some differences when you're looking at pages and that sort of thing. But it is fairly easy to navigate. I've been spending a lot of time in here and I'm not on Jason's level when it comes to digging in, but it's pretty easy to find what you need. It uses a lot of the same terms for acquisition and audience and that sort of thing, but it, it's pretty easy to get through. Yeah, nice refreshed look to it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Enhanced attribution is one of the big differences with GA4. So it uses data-driven attribution instead of last click, which is what UA noted used. So GA4 gives credit to all tactics that are involved to generating conversions. So it's giving you a much more accurate picture of what steps a user takes before converting on your website. And again, when we say conversion, we're talking about actions that are considered leads. So if it's filling out a form, making a phone call, that sort of thing, what are the steps? This data-driven attribution can really improve your ROI by helping you understand how your tactics are influencing those conversions. And really utilizing the advertising workspace, you can see how is your spend across all channels really impacting those conversions. And that's going to help you make those budgeting decisions to say, should we be putting more money on search or is, do we need to do some more display? Really, that's going to help you make some smart decisions about your marketing budget. So all this comes down to event-based measurement. And GA4 is really looking at events rather than sessions, which is what UA uh, used. And we'll get into like more details of what events are considered, but you can see in our two examples here. So under UA, a user could do two separate sessions and it would show you, well, in this session, we had a page view, we had some social interaction on this other session, they did X, Y, Z. With GA4, it's going to show you, okay, one user did all these different things. So there was a session event, there was a page view event, and you can even dig in deeper those parameters. An example of that would be for like a page view event. You can see first they went to our homepage and then they clicked on a product page and then they clicked on this next page and really see how that traffic flow goes. So it's really looking at how does an individual user interact with your site rather than here's what happened in session A and here's what happened in session B. Yeah, really 
every engagement that somebody's doing on the site now is considered an event. And so it's just, it's just a different way to, to look at it. But again, makes sense just with how people are navigating websites, especially across the different devices. So digging more into what are all these events that we're looking at, GA4 has several different events um, The automatically collected events. These are just will be set up when you get your GA4 property set up. Um, things like session start. Um, this goes anytime a user first goes on to your website. A first visit. So in UA, you probably used to seeing new users. And so first visit is similar where it's looking at the first time a particular user engaged with your site or an app. And then user engagement that gets into those specific events. Like if they're on a page for 10 seconds, or if they viewed two pages, or if they've convert, uh, completed a conversion event. And again, those conversions could be, you know, a call, a form fill, that sort of thing. Then that next layer is really that enhanced measurement events. So that would be an additional type that you can set up in your property. And that would be things like scrolling on the page. It could be page views, outbound clicks, searching on the site, that sort of thing. Maybe you have a lot of videos on your website. So you want to see, are people viewing those websites? You can track that as an event. And then you can go even further and do those custom events that get set up through Google Tag Manager that depending on what how your website's built, depending on your business and what you're wanting to measure, typically we set up standards for phone calls, emails, form submissions. So all of these come play together to really track how people are engaging with your website. GA4 is, Google's made it a lot easier to set up some of these. So those enhanced measurements, you can enable them really easily, just toggle on a switch within the platform. Prior in, in universal analytics, it was, it was more difficult to set up goals for file downloads or video engagements, things like that. So they made those just easier to set up, which is one of the added benefits for sure too. And I think too, this is where having a strong attribution strategy for your business is really important. So really going through your website and figuring out what do we want to measure? What's important for us to know that people are engaging with? Like I said, if you have a ton of videos, you've probably put a lot of money in creating those videos and you want to see are people actually watching them. That's where that comes into play is really being thoughtful about what do you want to track on your site? So then final piece here we'll dive into is just understanding the metrics. So we've talked about the why, what's different. Now we can take a look at some of what of those metrics look like here. So you can see these are the primary metrics uh, in UA compared to GA4. You'll see there are some similarities between users, page views, uh, events, purchases. Some of the names change slightly, but concepts around those are all very similar. We're going to focus in on those highlighted ones here just for the sake of time. Sessions, you're still tracking sessions within GA4. They look a little bit different. Um, now it's more of those engaged sessions that Carrie talked on where they last longer than 10 seconds, had a conversion event happen or visited two or more pages. So it, there's just a little bit more parameters around what those sessions look like. Average session duration, which is a big thing within Universal Analytics. Now GA4 is really focused on average engagement time instead. So rather than just looking at how long did this entire session last, it's only measuring how long somebody was actively engaged on the site. So going into the more meaningful metrics, it looks different. It might be shorter, which we have an example we can share in a second here than the average session duration used to, but you know that people were actively engaged during that time period. So it tells you a better story that way. Bounce rate, another big one from Universal Analytics. Now GA4 is focused more on engagement rate, which you could look at that essentially as the inverse of bounce rate. So rather than looking at Bounce rate, which was people going to the site and leaving without visiting another page or clicking on something or taking some type of action. Um, engagement rate is the opposite. How often is somebody going to the site and actively engaging, triggering some of those events that you have set up, you know, playing a video, clicking on a link, whatever that would be. Uh, and then the other final big thing is goal completions um, are now called conversions. They work very similarly. To Carrie's previous slide too, those are more of those custom events that we set up, things like 
phone calls, form submissions, things that are actual leads for your business. Conversions, it's just, it fits a little bit better in terms of what you use or see across advertising platforms too. Call them goals, call them more conversions. Not too different, but just a little bit different on the name inside there. Well, and I think to go back on, you said meaningful information, and that's really what this is getting down to, because the reality is you could have a thousand sessions on your website, but if only 10 of those are engaged, you want to know that's important information for you to have. So I think that this is really getting into some much more meaningful information that you can really use to make sure that your website is performing as strongly as you want it to. Looking at some examples, I think Jason and I are both visual people. We need those examples to understand all this stuff. So the one thing is with session duration versus average engagement time. So you can see on the left there, the UA example, that's what we would typically see in reports of session duration. But then you look, this is for the same website in GA4, that engagement time is a little bit lower than that session duration. And that's just because GA4 is tracking how long is someone actively engaged on your site that they're clicking, they're scrolling, they're interacting versus someone might might pull up your website and it's just sitting there on their screen, but they're not doing anything with it. So that's a really important thing to note as you're looking through reporting and you're like, why are we down so much for session time? Because it's counting it differently. And then Jason, you had some info on like benchmarks and stuff for this, right? Yeah. And I'll point out, so Average session duration there is a minute and 38 seconds. Average engagement time is 42 seconds, just if there's any confusion on the numbers. But yeah, we've, there's not, because J4 is still so new, there's not a lot of benchmarks out there as far as what isn't a good average engagement time. What we've been seeing with our clients is in that 35, 40 second range on average. I have seen some other agencies and things like that putting stuff out there. Similar numbers around 38 seconds. That'll over time, we'll see more of those benchmarks, I'm sure, come out. Uh, So, traffic sources that this too starts getting a little bit more detailed with GA4 than in UA. So, on the left, you can see UA channel groupings. We're all probably used to seeing these direct referral organic search. Uh, But then you can see GA4 gets a little bit more detailed. That cross network is a big one that's new. That is showing traffic coming from campaigns that run on multiple platforms. So if you have a performance max campaign, that would show up there. You can also see how it breaks out organic search, page search, organic social versus paid social. So it just provides a little bit more detail into where your traffic is coming from. And then the differences between the bounce rate, engagement rate there too, again, the inverse of each other, uh, how they play together. And then looking at, again, those goal conversions, these are the important numbers, right? To see how many people are actually calling and filling out forms on your website. So you will notice a difference between UA and GA4. How UA was set up is that it would track just one goal per session. And GA4 will actually track multiple conversions per session. So an example of that would be If someone's on your site and they fill out a form and then they call you, in UA, that would just be one conversion. But in GA4, it would count both the form fill and the call, even though it was in one session as two different conversions. So you will notice a change there. So just be aware of that. It's not an apples to apples comparison. So what does this all mean? We've uh, packed a lot of information in, what are we at? Close to 30 minutes. There's a lot of detail here, but what does this mean for your business? Uh, First and foremost, better insights. So you're going to better understand how users are interacting with your website across all devices. How many pages are they viewing? Are they reading all the content? Really getting a good sense of that. And with those insights, you can then make content updates Are you providing good content for your users? Are there things that you should remove? Do you need to add more video? All of those things, this is going to help you make those sorts of decisions. And also user experience, because how uh, long does it take for a user to turn into a lead? Is there ways that you can improve navigation on your site? Make sure that they're finding the right information at different points. All of that is really going to be easier for you to 
gauge and, and navigate. And really this goes back to what questions do you have about your users? It's a lot easier to find that out now. Really tells that story better and follows users like we've talked about across their journey, across devices, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. To wrap up here, just some quick key takeaways. Tracking in GA4 is event-based rather than session-based. So metrics are going to differ from what we've been used to seeing in universal analytics. Expect it, they're, they're just not going to match up, which can be frustrating. Trust me, I know. But just going into it, having that understanding definitely helps. That said, you can still use universal analytics and, and we do and we encourage it to see historical information for the time being. So Google has said that data will eventually go away. If you are a data client, we're gonna be storing that in a third party solution for you. So you'll still have access to that even if or when Google gets rid of that information. And the way that we like to use it is just to see how things were trending prior to the switch here into GA4. So we're not looking at the big differences in the actual metrics, but just those trend lines throughout the year and and things like that. And if you have any questions, we can definitely help bridge the gap between the two data sources that way. And then I feel like I've said this many times just with the team and everything too, but big thing just to remember, all companies had to make the switch to GA4. So we're really all starting back at, at square one here together. Change can be frustrating, especially when it's forced upon you like this was, but We're in it together. We'll continue to share with each other and learn. The big thing, though, too, is that J4 is going to be more valuable for your organization and and business. It's better built for the future. So it's just get through the the hard part here, but it's going to be a better solution overall. Yeah. And to point out with the UA data, for now, it is still available on Google, but we also will be keeping that information for our clients to, to be able to access. So that's important to note. And I think really talk to your data team. For those of you that are current clients, talk to your data team about what information is really important to you that you want to find. And they can really help you navigate the differences between the two, make sure that we're still hitting the benchmarks that you need. If you're not a current data client, you can reach out to us and we'd love to help you too with all of this because it's a lot to navigate. So we're here to help and we're doing a lot of internal training to make sure we're all up to speed on that. Nice. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you all for, for, for coming. Appreciate uh, your time today. And as Carrie said, reach out if you need anything. Zoe, any final words to take us out? We do have that final slide just with our next webinar, um, which I briefly touched on at the beginning, but we'll be sending some information about this out if you'd like to join. And like I said, we'll continue to have webinars uh, once per month through the end of the year. So we'd love to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.